If you want to know beer, we are always near. I buy old That's just a jingle I made up. I'm Barry the Beer Guy with I buy old beer .com. I'm not going to talk the whole video this intensely and look in your face and everything. And it's not hardcore, it's about beer. Today's lesson, well, it's a find kind of. Um, a person in the liquor industry in Omaha, Nebraska. 60 years in the liquor business. Hmm. Well, he started bootlegging Alki at age 10 in his bike in the wagon, but it's an interesting story. Ready to hear it? Siliano was a bartender. For more than 60 years, he was involved with liquor. During his many years as a bartender, he was known for wearing his fashionable sweater vest and handing out good-natured barbs with the drinks he served. He ran alcohol in a wagon for his dad. He started working at the popular downtown key club bar and restaurant for five bucks a week and was there for almost 30 years. He was a serviceman in World War II. And in 1986, he was named a City of Hope great guy and also the Bartender's Hall of Fame by Bartender Magazine. He collected these sheets. How he got them, I don't know, but they're from a Continental Can employee in Omaha, Nebraska. Here's the manila envelope they came in. You can see somebody tried to hold it together over the years with some electrical tape. And the can sheets were carefully wrapped and placed in this, I don't know, is it craft paper or something? Which kept them in pristine condition. What are can sheets, you might ask? Well, these are flat sheets of tin before they were rolled into a beer can with lids on top and bottom. And some of these sheets came from the flat top era where you needed a church key to pierce the lid to drink your beer, and others were of the pull tab variety. Since Continental Can was located and uh, Joseph Siciliano were both in Omaha, Nebraska, Somehow they cross paths. So whether a former worker or rep or something brought them into Joe, the bartender, I don't know. But he had them kept in his estate in this original envelope, in the paper, and they're all remarkably well preserved. The thing about metallic cans, see that shiny metal finish? So many times that is prone to what they call humidity spotting, and when that develops even worse, like a cancer, it turns into rust, which can't really be removed from the can. But as you can see, these can sheets are in amazing shape because they were wrapped in paper and probably kept in a temperature-controlled environment. But you know what the key is? There's a canning code. Now, this is 29. I'm not sure which plant that is, but most of these sheets have... 40, which denotes Omaha as the location. There are a few Minneapolis beers in here, which I assume were probably uh, made in Mankato, where they had a Continental Can plant. But as a beer can collector, I am thrilled to get these sheets. Some people frame them and put them on the wall and don't roll them. But us beer can collecting geeks, you know what we love to do? Using lids like this, you have to know which lids go with which cans. You wouldn't want to pull a pull tab lid on a punch top can. But there is a person within our hobby that uses a machine like this, a lidding machine, which were popular way back when for canning food and such. But they can apply the proper lids using this machine and these sheets. Pretty cool, huh? Got to show you these Schmidt sheets too. See this metallic gold border that goes right on the seam and also around the logo. See how that shiny gold? These cans were made in what they call zip tab versions, which is an early version of this, kind of a funky shape. Does not look like this, it's more pronounced and jagged. And that was the early first pull tab. Or these cans were also lidded with these flat top lids on both top and bottom. Sometimes they had what was called a vanity lid with Schmidt printed on top. This one you can't see very well, but breweries, a lot of times brewers would put their brand on top. 
But these cans are really cool. And just as a general rule, these white background ones are a little tougher than the blue background. It's rumored that these were, I don't know, sheets of so many, but these were like short run cans where there might be four per sheet of these blue background. There might only be two or one of these in the corner. That's just a rumor anyway. But as a Minnesota kid, to see these Schmidt sheets in such beautiful shape is amazing. There were about, I think, 60 sheets in this find, and I really thank the employee that thought enough to put them in the paper like this and wrap them so carefully. A lot of times these flat sheets were submitted to the ATF, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Commission, which has to give proof to any can sheets for the wording, alcohol content. How about these beautiful colors? Wyoming, but later brewed by Walter Brewing in Pueblo, Colorado. Hoffman House, Einbach, Gold Label. This was a punched out can, as was this. Berghoff, and there's different variations of this with this Griffin symbol, also brewed by different brewers in different states. As you can see down in the corner of this one, that's another Omaha canning company. Berghoff, Big State from Tivoli Brewing Company. Tivoli is I love it spelled backwards in Denver, Colorado. Silver Peak Beer. This was a pull tab can. And what's cool about this one is check out the back. It's got the date on here. And this is what I mean about flat sheets being sent to the ATF or liquor control board in each state for approval. They would also have a color proof sent to the brewer or anyone that would approve that within the brewery, but these would also be approved on a national level for distribution to retailers. The, all the wording and verbiage had to be correct, so they would often sign off on these, and you can see the date of December 11th, 1968. This would have been a pull tab can. This one was a punch top can. This one also a punch top can, but look at the condition, the gloss, the gold. I mean, these are perfect. Tivoli Bach beer. A lot of times brewers just added caramel coloring and called it Bach beer, but this was traditionally a spring release. Brown Derby, Pearl from Texas, Country Tavern, and that was brewed by the Pearl Brewing Company in San Antonio and also St. Joseph, Missouri. The Mulebach Brewing Company in Kansas City. This was a near beer, probably half percent alcohol, but you can see Getz, Getz, that was a version that the Getz Brewing Company put out. Country Club Malt Lager, a different variation, and this has 100 years. A few of these have 100 years, so that dates them to a specific year. I believe it's 1959. Let's go and zoom in. I believe that's what it says. Well... My eyesight's bad. <laughs> gets, gets, gets. I gotta get me some gets. And Country Club. So that concludes my can sheet video. If by chance you have found any can sheets or if you had a relative that worked at a can company and you want to know more about these flat sheets or want to sell them to a beer geek like me, I'm your guy. I'm Barry the Beer Guy from... I buy old beer dot com.